ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಜೇವರೋಗಿಣ ಗುರವೇ ಸರ್ವೋಕಾಂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಮೂರ್ತಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನೇನ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ತಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣ ಪೂಜಾ ಕರಿಷ್ಯೆ ಆದೋಷೀ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣ ಪೂಜಾ ಕರಿಷ್ಯೆ ಶುಕ್ಲಾಂಗರ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಶರಣ ಸರ್ಕುಜ ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಪರಂ ಧ್ಯಾಯೇ ಸರ್ವ ವಿಘ್ನೋಶಾಂತೇ ಓಂ ಗಣಾನಂತ್ವಾಗಣಪತಿಂಕವೀನಾಂಪಮಸ್ತಮಂ ಜ್ಯೇಷ್ಠರಾಜ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಣ ಸ್ವತಃಶ್ಮಂತಿಸೀದ ಸಾಧನ ಓಂ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭೂರ್ಭುಸ್ವಃ ಅಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಹರಿದ್ರಾಬಿಂಬೆ ಸುಮುಖಂ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ಧ್ಯಾಯಿ ಆವಾಹಯಿ ಸ್ಥಾಪಯಿ ಪೂಜೆಯಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ನಮಃ ರಕ್ತಿಂಹಾಧನ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ವಿಘ್ನೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ನಮಃ ಪಾತಾಂಧಯೋ ಪಾಚ್ಯಂ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಅರ್ಘ್ಯಂ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಆಚಮನೀಯ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಓಂ ಭೂರ್ಭುಸ್ವ ಗಂಗಣಪತೆ ನಮಃ ಶುದ್ಧೋದಕ ಸ್ನಾನ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಶುದ್ಧೋದಕ ಸ್ನಾನಾಂತರಾಚಮನೀಯ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ವಸ್ತ್ರೋತ್ರಿಯೇ ಯಜ್ಞವೈತಾ ಗೃಣಾರ್ಥೇ ಪುಷ್ಪಾ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ದಿವ್ಯ ಪರಿಮಣಬಂಧಾನ್ ಧಾರಿಯಿ ಗಂಧಸ್ಯೋಪರಿಹರಿತ್ರ ಕುಂಕುಮ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಅಕ್ಷತಾನ್ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಪುಷ್ಪಮಾಂ ಸಮರ್ಪಯಿ ಪುಷ್ಪೈ ಸುಪೂಜಯಿ ಅಗಜಾನನ ಪದ್ಮಾರ್ಕಾನಿಶಂ ಅನೇಕ ದಂತಂಭಕ್ಕಾಸ್ಮೇ ಓಂ ಸುಖಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಕಪಿಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಜಕರ್ಣಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಲಂಬೋದರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಕಟಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಘ್ನರಾಜಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿನಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಧೂಮಕೇತವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಣಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಜಾನನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶೂರ್ಪಕರ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹೇರಂಬಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸ್ಕಂದಪೂರ್ವಜಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಿದ್ಧಿವಿನಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹರಿ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ಅಪಸ್ಪೃಶ್ಯ ಆದೋ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನಾಧಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಹಾಗಣಪತಿ ಸ್ಮರಣ ಕರಿಷ
ओं गणना गणपति हवामे कविंकवे नाम घोषवस्तम ज्येष्ठराज ब्रह्मण ब्रह्मणस्पत नृण्वन्नोतिधन ओं श्री महागणपत नम विमलमचल सर्वती साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरगित सद्गुर तम नमा ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने यो मवद्याय दक्षिणाूर्त नम सर्व्यापिने सद्गुर नम आसन समर्पया शून्य कुंभ इवा भरे पूर्णा सद्गुरे नम 
पूर्णकुंभम समर्पयामी पंकजद्वंद्रहणेन मुक्षीय पाद तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तुरीय पाद प्रापकाय सदुरव नम पादिंदोपाद्यम समर्पयामी अर्घ्यमस्मृतास्तमय गरीयसे नमस्तस्म अभिद्या ग्रंथि भेदिने अभिद्यानाशकाय सद्गुरव नम अर्घ्यम सर्पयाक्यु स्नाता पुण्या गिरजा ब्रह्म गच्छन्ति तस्म श्रीगुरव नम महावाक्योपदेशकर्ते सद्गुरव नम
கோயில் இருக்கிற பக்கத்தில் விண்ணெல்லாம் வச்சுருக்கோம் ஜானநாசகாய நம அனபேக்ஷாய நம அனசூயவே நம அனுபமாய நம அபயப்பிரதே நம அமானினே நம அஹிம்சாமூர்த்தயே நம அஹேதுகதயாசிந்தவே நம அஹங்காரநாசகாய நம அஹங்காரவர்ஜிதாய நம ஆச்சாரியேந்திராய நம ஆத்மசந்துஷாய நம ஆனந்தமூர்த்தயே நம ஆர்ஜவயுக்தாய நம உச்சிதவாச்சே நம உச்சாஹினே நம உதாசீனாய நம உபரதாய நம ஐஸ்வல்யுக்தாய நம ஓத்தாய நம ஓமாவதே நம ஓத்தீதாய நம சாருவாவிலாசாய நம சாருஹாசாய நம சின்னசம்சயாய நம ஜானதாத்ரே நம ஜானயத்பராய நம 
ಓಂ ತತ್ವದರ್ಶಿನೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತಪಸ್ವಿನೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತಾಪಹರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತುಲ್ಯ ನಿಂದಾಸ್ತು ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತುಲ್ಯ ಪ್ರಿಯಾ ಪ್ರಿಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತುಲ್ಯ ಮಾನಾಪಮಾನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತ್ಯಕ್ತ ಸರ್ವ ಪರಿಗ್ರಹಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತ್ಯಾಗಿ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಕ್ಷಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಾಂತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದೃಢವ್ರತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದೋಷವರ್ಜಿತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದ್ವಂದ್ವಾತೀತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸ್ಥಿರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿತ್ಯ ಸಂತುಷ್ಟಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರಹಂಕಾರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರಾಶ್ರಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರ್ಭಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರ್ಮದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರ್ಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರ್ಮಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿರ್ಮೋಹಾಯ ನಮಃ ಕ್ಷೇಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಯತಿಲೋಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿಷ್ಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿಷ್ಕ್ರೋಧಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನಿಸ್ಸಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪರಮಸುಖದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪಂಡಿತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಪ್ರವರ್ತಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಭಾಷಿಣೆ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಕರ್ಮ ಸಮಾಧಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮನಿಷ್ಠಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾತ್ಮ ವಿಧೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭಕ್ತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭವರೋಗಹರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದಾತ್ರೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮಂಗಳಕರ್ತೇ ನಮಃ 
ओम मधुरभाषिणे नम ओम महात्मने नम महावाक्योपदेशकर्ते नम ओमितभाषिणे नम ओम मुक्ताय नम ओम मौनिने नम चिताय नम ओम यत नम ओम यदृच्छालाभ सतुष्टाय नम ओम युक्ताय नम गद्वेशवर्जिताय नम ओम विदिताखिलशास्त्राय नम ओम विद्या विनय संपन्नाय नम ओम विमत्सराय नम विवेकिने नम ओम विशाल हृदयाय नम ओम व्यवसायिने नम ओम शरणागतवत्सलाय नम शाताय नम ओम शुद्धमानसाय नम ओम शिष्य प्रियाय नम ओम श्रद्धावते नम श्रोत्रियाय नम ओम सत्यवाचे नम ओम सदा मुदितवदनाय नम ओम समचिताय नम सनाधिकवर्जिताय नम ओम सहितचिताय नम ओम सर्वूतहिताय नम ओम सिद्धाय नम सुलभाय नम ओम सुशीलाय नम ओम सुहृदे नम ओम सूक्ष्मबुद्ध नम संकल्पवर्जिताय नम ओम संप्रदाय विधे नम ओम स्वतंत्राय नम श्री दयानंद स्वामीने नम अष्टोत्तर शतनामाचन पूजा समर्पयाम
அந்த பக்கம்
ಭಗಿರಜಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ನಿಷ್ಕಲ ತತ್ಸುಧ್ರಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿಷಾಂ ಜ್ಯೋತಿ ತದ್ಯಾತ್ಮವಿಧೋ ವಿಧೋ ನ ತತ್ರ ಸೂರ್ಯೋ ಭಾತಿ ನ ಚಂದ್ರಕಾರಕಂಭಾತಿ ಸದ್ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಪುಷ್ಪಾಯತನ ಸ್ವಪ್ನಂಪಚಾರಕಂಚಿಪಾಪಚಾರಿಸ್ತೋತ್ರಸ್ತೋತ್ರಫುಲ್ ಫೋರ್ ಅಖಂಡಮಂಡಲಾಕಾರಂಪದರ್ಶಿತೀರಾಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನಶಲಾಕೆಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರನ್ಮೀಲಿತಂ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಗುರುರ್ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುರೇವ ಪರಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಸ್ಥಾವರಂ ಜಂಗಮಂ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತ ಯತ್ಕಿಂಚಿತ್ ಸ ಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದಂ ದರ್ಶಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಚಿನ್ಮಯ ವ್ಯಾಪಿ ಯತ್ಸೈಲೋಕ್ಯ ಸ ಚರಾಚರ ತತ್ಪದಂ ದರ್ಶಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಸರ್ವಶ್ರುತಿಶಿರೋರತ್ನ ವಿರಾಜಿತ ಪದಾಂಬುಜ ವೇದಾಂತಾಂಬುಜ ಸೂರ್ಯೋ ಯಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಶಾಂತ ವ್ಯೋಮಾತೀತೋ ನಿರಂಜನ ಬಿಂದುನಾದ ಕಲಾತೀತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಜ್ಞಾನಶಕ್ತಿ ಸಮಾರೂಢ ತತ್ವಮಾಲಾ ವಿಭೂಷಿತ ಭುಕ್ತಿ ಮುಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದಾತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮ ಸಂಪ್ರಾಪ್ತ ಕರ್ಮ ಬಂಧ ವಿಧಾಗಿನೆ ಆತ್ಮಜ್ಞಾನ ಪ್ರಧಾನೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಶೋಷಣ ಸಿಂಧೋಶ್ಚ ಜ್ಞಾಪನ ಸಾರ ಸಂಪದ ಗುರೋ ಪಾದೋದಕ ಸಮ್ಯಕ್ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ನ ಗುರೋರಧಿಕ ತತ್ವ ನ ಗುರೋರಧಿಕ ತಪ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞಾನಾತ್ಪರಂ ನಾಸ್ತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ಮನ್ನಾಥ ಶ್ರೀಜಗನ್ನಾಥ 
वैराग्य साम्राज्य पूजनाभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्याम कविवाराशि निशाकराभ्या दौर्भाग्य दावांबुदिकाभ्या दूरीता रिपत्तिभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामीपतिता समीयु कदाचिद्याशुदरिद्रवरिया मूकाचस्पतिताभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्याम नालीकनीकाशपदाताभ्याम मोहादिवारिकाभ्या नमज्जनाभीष्टति प्रदाभ्या नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामौलिव्रजरत्नका सरिद्विराजशकनकाभ्यापत्दाभ्यालोकपंक् नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यापाकाराकपरंपराभ्यापत्रयाद्र खगेशोषणवाड़वाभ्यामो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यादिषट्कद वैभवाभ्या सदान व्रज दीक्षिताभ्यामाधवाभक्तिभ्यामो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामस्वाचापराणाखिलेष्टाभ्यादुरंधराभ्यादूजनाभ्याम नमो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामादिसर्पव्रजगारुढ़ाभ्यावेकवैराग्य निधि प्रदाभ्यामोदप्रदाभ्यामोक्षदाभ्यामो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्यामो नम श्री गुरुपादुकाभ्या न स्पर्शत्म तथा स्थिरचनयुगे सद्गुस्वीय शिष्ये स्वीयं साम्यम विधत्ते सद्गुवे न विष्णु नमस्कुर्मो यथा सद्गुरवे नम अभी लास्ट में एक मंगल आरती करेंगे ना लास्ट में पहले प्रवचन वगैरह है वो कर लेते हैं वीडियो अबाउट दिस डिवोशन 
to gurus how pujya swami ji used to look upon his gurus there is a small video we will see that after that there will be a a <coughs> pravachanam by swamini brahma vid uh, brahmalina anand ji and i myself will talk a few words குருதட்சண <laughs> பாக்ஸ் <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Om. I will sing a bhajan. You can repeat after me. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Veda Vyasa Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Adi Shankara Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Shivananda Shri Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Tapovana Shri Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Chinmayananda Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Pranavananda Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Tarananda Shri Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Dayananda Shri Sad Guru Jai Jai. Guru Maharaj, Guru Jai Jai, Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Parabrahma Sad Guru Jai Jai. Sadashiva Sabharambham, Shankaracharya Madhyamam, Asmadacharya Paryantam, Vande Guru Paramparam. 
यटाक्षाभ्याम शुभम सर्व प्रवर्तते दया राशि दयानंद वंदेहम सादर मुदा my namaskaram to all of you we are celebrating vyasa purnima which is otherwise called guru purnima it is called vyasa purnima because it is today is supposed to be the birthday of veda vyasa veda vyasa is very well known guru in our tradition his contribution to our tradition is unparalleled his name itself suggests veda vyasa he compiled vedas he did not compose vedas he compiled vedas therefore he got the name veda vyasa with the help of his four disciples pela jaimi pela then um, vaishampayana jaimini and sumantu so with the help of these four disciples he compiled vedas and vedas include upanishads so he has contributed in our getting upanishads and he has compiled bhagavad gita dialogue between shri krishna and arjuna and he has written brahma sutra and these three are considered to be prasthana trayam the main text for getting self knowledge and in all three of them there is his contribution not only that he wrote mahabharata itihasa grantha it is called a book of history where there are 100000 verses and he has written yoga sutra bhashyam he has written veda vyasa smriti thus and also 18 puranas a huge literature we have thus we all are very very indebted to veda vyasa and therefore we celebrate his birthday today which is called vyasa purnima in fact he is so great that in our tradition he is considered to be an avatar of vishnu therefore we say vyasaya vishnu rupaya vyasa rupaya vishnave so he is considered to be avatar itself because so much work he has done and he represents guru parampara therefore vyasa purnima is also known as guru purnima on this day we express our gratitude to our guru who represents the entire tradition of gurus and kayena vacha manasa with our body we do puja of guru if he is available or his paduka we worship then stotram we chant the stotras guru stotras we did three of them and manasa through our mind we remember the contribution of guru the grace of guru we have or we had in our life thus by all three means we express our gratitude to guru who represents guru parampara regarding this guru guru bhakti there are some misconceptions in our tradition so much glory is sang presented in our shastra yasya deve para bhakti hi yatha deve tatha guru tasya ite katita hyarthaha prakashante mahatmana means the person who has got devotion for guru and the lord for that person alone the shastra will be revealed and if guru is not there the vidya is not possible in fact bhagwan bhashyakaras one place he says 
ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಗುರು ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಲಭ್ಯಾಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾಂ ಸೊ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಈಸ್ ರಿಸೀವ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದಿ ಗ್ರೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಗುರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಸ್ತೋತ್ರಾಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಆರ್ ಗ್ಲೋರಿಫೈಯಿಂಗ್ ದ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗುರು ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬೇಸ್ಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಸಮ್ ಮಿಸ್ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಾಟ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಕ್ಲಾರಿಫೈ ಸಮ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಒನ್ ಮಿಸ್ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಗುರು ಭಕ್ತಿ ಈಸ್ ಎ ಗುರು ಡಮ್ many people they say this in the name of guru bhakti you are entertaining encouraging guru dam actually guru dam if you analyze the word is a simple word guru dam means being a guru like being free is called freedom being a wise is called wisdom similarly being a guru is called guru dam but now that word is used guru dam in the sense of exaggerated importance given to guru guru is presented as a superhuman figure not no he cannot be asked any question he beyond any be, beyond any question and you cannot afford to displease in any manner and there is a cult around that person that type of situation is called gurudam and many people think that the guru bhakti is as good as that guru dam so we clarify that the guru bhakti which we talk about which shastra talks about is not that guru dam because in guru dam a a person is given so much importance whereas in guru bhakti which we are talking about we are talking about devotion to the guru who represents the institution of sampradaya the parampara tradition and guru himself will tell herself will tell that i am only a representative of the parampara he or she does not claim this vision this teaching methodology as he is or her own and he does not claim any superhuman status you just now you listen to puja swami ji sai was an ordinary person i had ordinary upbringing and in fact in one video you might have seen puja swami ji is i am a normal person in fact too normal no. doesn't claim any superhuman status so we are talking about the devotion to the guru who is representing the tradition of teachers and there is no cult around the person he is looked upon as the last link because of which i am connected to the parampara so the guru bhakti which we are talking about is not the gurudam which is well which is known among some people second thing is some people think that by doing devotional activities related to guru by that itself will get moksha means you chant guru stotra you chant all this uh, pa- guru paduka stotra you do morning guru puja evening guru puja and you read the guru charitram etc by that itself you will get moksha no other separate sadhana is required you only have to do this gu- devotional activities related to guru that's not correct the devotional activities addressed to guru related to guru is very useful but that itself will not give you gnanam will not give you moksha so we should not exaggerate the place of such devotional activities another thing is people think that by study of shastra etc or by our effort this vidya will not come so there is no point in making any effort by the grace of guru just by mere grace of guru alone this gnanam and moksha will come and we expect some mystical incident happening that one day guru will put his hand on my head and the moksha will be transferred from his hand to my head and i will be enlightened we do not encourage we don't uh, endorse this idea so one de- one has to work 
वन हैज टू मेक एफर्ट टू स्टडी शास्त्र द गुरुस ब्लेसिंग इज नॉट ए रिप्लेसमेंट फॉर अवर एफर्ट्स रियल गुरु विल नेवर से दैट दैट यू डोंट स्टडी एट्सेट्रा यू जस्ट डू माई सेवा यू विल गेट एवरी थिंग रियल गुरु विल नॉट से दैट यस यू डू सेवा ऑफ कोर्स but along with the study of the shastra is required that's why our pujya swami ji he studied brahma sutra he studied he had so much grace but still he studied therefore this grace of the guru whatever you think of is not a replacement for our efforts of shravana manan and nididhyasana they will definitely strengthen our effort but they are the grace is not a replacement for our effort and so we don't expect any miracle to happen one day guru puts his hand and we are enlightened or we got moksha such things are not encouraged in our tradition and then what is grace of guru we keep talking about grace of the guru grace of the guru is the teaching given by the guru his availability to guide us and of course he blesses he, he gives his blessings which will definitely help us in removing the obstacle in the pursuit so he does give us blessings and he teaches us he is available to guide us that is his grace we should not expect any miraculous power from him which will get us moksha and some people think that atmanah guru hu atma means the self alone is the guru for oneself means you do not require external guru you become your own guru and uh, for, there are some sentences you know in bhagavatam which may encourage this idea so that particular thinking is not accepted by our tradition इन मुंडकोपनिषद क्लियरली मेंशन तद विज्ञानार्थम गुरुम एव अभिगच्छेत एंड भगवान भाष्यकार से एव मींस शास्त्रज्ञोपि स्वातंत्र्येण ब्रह्मज्ञानान्वेषणम न कुर्यात सो इवन इफ यू आर अ स्कॉलर इन संस्कृत यू आर स्कॉलर इन मीमांसा न्याय एट्सेट्रा बट स्टिल डोंट अटेम्प्ट टू गेट दिस विजन बाय योरसेल्फ सो गुरु इज ए मस्ट फॉर every student then people generally ask this question what about ramana maharshi etc et no. samajhi ramana maharshi did not uh, go to guru see ramana maharshi did not ask this question you are asking question means you are not ramana maharshi <laughs> so, so ramana maharshi did not require you require and therefore better take help of guru thus guru is a must but the grace of guru should be placed properly in our pursuit then we will not ignore yeah okay if guru's grace is not there some battery is discharged you know <laughs> so your our battery get 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 discharged so we require some guru to again recharge our battery really the spiritual pursuit pursuit is full of obstacles and at every juncture we require the blessing guidance of guru it makes so much difference you know those who have guru they know how much difference it makes and that is why we express our gratitude to our guru and that is the significance of this guru purnima because when we express our gratitude then we develop more and more value for the knowledge we have and it will have more impact the knowledge will have more impact on our life another significance of this today is today is the beginning of chaturmasya so sanyasins they take chaturmasya vratam and they generally they will not go out 
and chatur masya means four months four months became too much then they paksho vai masa they made it two months and so they two months they don't go out but anyway it is not so much relevant but that is also one significance another significance is in purana and other shastras it is mentioned that we take some vratam during this chatur masya some vratam two types vratam means vow some commitment and this vratam is of two types pravrutyatmaka and nivrutyatmaka pravrutyatmaka means we positively do something every day we chant some stotra which you were not doing earlier whatever you are doing you continue that also is good but we can take a vow for doing something extra so they say you chant this purusha suktam every day in front of vishnu it is very good for buddhi so it's very very useful and or you decide to chant vishnu sahasranama or any stotra which you are not chanting so i take a vratam for four months that i will chant this particular stotra or i will do pradakshina 108 pradakshina of the lord that is a vratam it will help also to reduce your weight the both ways it will help so some vratam positively we decide to do something that is called pravrutyatmaka vratam and if your life is already disciplined a life is full of these spiritual activities you don't require vratam but some people who are struggling to come to this pursuit they are going back not getting stabilized for them vratam is useful if you are already life is full of this you don't require but otherwise this vratam may help you to come back come to the track or come back to the track another type of vratam is nivruttyatmaka vratam where we drop something like for four months or at least two months i will not take sweet i will not watch tv or something like that some vratam nivruttyatmaka where we drop something and it is said in shastra that suppose you decide to drop sweet so what you drop you should serve it to others that more difficult so you don't eat you have to give it to others so particular thing whichever you like but tv you don't say swami i will not watch tv i will ask my wife to watch tv that that is, <laughs> that is not necessary so nivruttyatmaka vratam you drop something or you decide that nowadays now onwards i will get up early morning 5 o'clock and i will resume my sandhya vandanam or whatever so this is a good day to start so whatever i has been stopped again you can resume so this particular day can help you to you know come back to the track you know resume whatever you have missed or start something new so that you will have more commitment to the pursuit of the attainment of parmatma which is called moksha so we pray to all the gurus the parampara of the guru we starts with lord dakshinamurti and all of us are very very blessed that we are exposed to this tradition of teachers directly indirectly and so we invoke the grace of all the gurus so that we succeed in our pursuit of discovery of inner freedom with this i conclude om tat sat परब्रह्मनिष्ठ स्वथो धर्मनिष्ठ 
अहिंसकनिष्ठम स्वशिष्य सुजुष्ट यतीना वरिष्ठ गुरूना गरिष्ठ दयानंदूप मदाचार्यमीडे दयानंदूप मदाचार्यमीडे ओम इट्स अ लिटिल डिफिकल्ट टास्क टू टॉक आफ्टर सीइंग द होल वीडियो वेर सो मेनी थिंग्स हैव बीन सेट एंड आल्सो स्वामी जी हैज टॉक्ड so anyway i'll share some thoughts that i had around this guru purnima i had just had some thoughts about it some reminiscences and swami ji asked me also to talk so i'll just share some of these ideas with you maybe if there are repetitions of what has already been said please excuse me i was just thinking so today we call it guru purnima day or vyasa purnima and as swami ji recounted so many so much vyasa has contributed to this tradition so two important things that we study today also so vyasa is supposed to have been a contemporary of lord krishna and we say lord krishna's time is about about approximately 5000 years ago and he Lord Krishna gave that Gita for us say, about five thousand years ago, which actually Vyasa wrote for us the Mahabharata and also in that the Bhagavad Gita. So for five thousand years, now imagine it has been coming to us, generation after generation after generation after generation. How many teachers should have been there to, if it has to come for us? something about from 5000 years ago up to now again we have uh, the gita and the brahma sutra the upanishads etc and in fact vyasa has written brahma sutra so trying to establish what exactly some con- conflicting sentences of the upanishad mean and that means the upanishads were there before that and upanishad teachers were there even before vyasa and after that we have shankara who has written for us the bhashyam on the prasthanatraya so he has written bhashyam on the bhagavad gita he has written bhashyam on the brahma sutra he has written bhashyam on the i mean so quite important upanishads he has written and shankara so seriously looked into the tatparyam of all these texts and very sincerely wrote all the bhashyams for us and some some people according to some mats shankara is supposed to have been bc about 3 uh, uh, to 7000 700 years bc some people say he was in the 7th century whatever it be even if you take 7th century again 13th centuries now today his bhashya has come down again in an unbroken tradition up to today there have been people he has taught bhashyam to people and and then there have been again and again people who have been teaching this bhashya and not only that again imagine the number of people who have tried to write commentary sub commentaries on shankara's bhashya so we have a book with seven commentaries of bhagavad gita so leaving shankaras again six people have written commentaries and in the modern day we are studying one more commentary from belagonda ramraya kavi and each of them again have tried to look into what is the tatparyam of the moolam and what is the hridaya of shankara what what exactly did he mean when he wrote a particular sentence in his bhashyam and so much they have spent their time looking into that and then try to explain to us so it has been coming down like this for the gita so many commentaries for the upanishads again anandagiri has written and again so many others have written and again from the for the brahma sutra we have got two lines of so many people written uh, vivarana school is there bhamati school is there and again there then again sub commentary on that sub sub commentary on that and sub 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 commentary on that like that just imagine the number of people who have just dedicated their whole life looking into this 
and how much of time they should have spent not they did not have computers they did not have all that they had to sit and write and uh, that they, i mean thus they had dedicated their whole lives into looking into the, the in vedanta and automatically they have all produced i mean they have been they have been uh, students in their own right and they have been teachers in their own right and then again produced a guru shishya parampara now one story i just want to recall any of you may know the story just there is there is a vachaspati mishra who wrote uh, a commentary on the uh, brahma sutra bhashyam of shankara and it is said that so, i mean a little after his marriage he started writing this text and he went on writing and writing and writing and then he did not even you know he he was not even distracted by the, his wife being around and the wife also had so much of a commitment for what he was doing that uh, unobtrusively she kept on helping him for everything that he was doing so keeping all the papers ready keeping the ink and pen everything ready etc and one fine day he finishes the work and looks up and the story goes like this that he is surprised to see there is a older looking lady <laughs> okay so he has not really paid attention to his married wife and uh, the, the whole time his mind has been on this and how much the wife should have been committed to what he was doing that she never asked you married me and you are not paying any attention to me you are all the time engrossed in something she never said anything unobtrusively all the time she kept helping him and then when he found that i have unfortunately not done my duty to her as a husband and he paid her the highest tribute by naming his work after her name just imagine so this is how people have spent their lives all the time so that now today we have got an unbroken uh, for centuries and centuries we have got unbroken line of teachers and students again each each student becoming a teacher in their own right so there was a particular shloka that was chanted here at the end you know for stotram so i just i am not a person very good in my hearting everything so <coughs> i just thought i will chant that shloka and just talk a little about it so there is a work called shata shloki written by adi shankara not only did he write bhashyams he wrote many prakarana granthas also and one important prakarana grantha that shankara has written is the shata shloki and right in the first shloka of the shata shloki he pays a tribute to the guru and he writes like this drishtanto naiva drishtas tribuvan jatare sadguru jnana datuh स्पर्शेत कल्प्य सनयति यदहो स्वर्णता अश्मसारम न स्पर्शत्व तथा श्रुतचरणयुगे सद्गुस्वीय शिष्य स्वीय साम्यम विधत्ते निरुपम तेन वा लौकिकोपी सो शंकर से दैट इन ऑल द थ्री वर्ल्ड्स if you were to search for an upama something that can be compared to a sadguru so after searching a lot then perhaps now you think this parsha stone can be taken as a, a comparison for that but still this parsha stone is something that if you rub it against another stone it can convert that stone into gold but the stone which was converted into gold cannot convert another stone into gold so it it gives ashmasaram swarnatam nayati but nas parishatva it cannot make that other stone into another sparsha stone so so that it has the property of again converting another thing to gold so it stops there so sparsha stone is sparsha and it can do a lot of work but it cannot convert any other thing into sparsha so that sparsha stone also falls short as for i mean as a upama for a sadguru and sadguru is one 
who is able to teach and give the give the vision to his students and in turn create a teacher out of that student and that student in turn can become a guru and create further students who can become gurus such is the mahima of so the guru so he says guru hu nirupama so you cannot really find any comparison and he says alaukika he is out of the ordinary nothing in the world can be given as a as a example or as an upama comparison for the guru and one of the commenters for this shloka writes alaukika means he is equal to bhagavan <laughs> okay so th this is alaukika means out of the ordinary so he is not laukika so thus we have really the whole unbroken uh, I mean chain of teachers we say the whole teaching started with bhagavan so we we chant the shloka sada shiva samarambha so started with sada shiva or dakshinamurti or it started with narayana and we trace it narayana gave to his uh, son padmabhuva so yo brahmanam vidadati purvam yo vai vedamscha prahinoti tasmai so not only he created brahma ji and uh, he gave the whole teaching to brahma ji and from brahma ji again it keeps coming so padma bhuva then vasishta of course it is not immediately some names are all in between left we cannot say this is direct line in between in between some things are left so we have to assume all those things so he, then it came to vasishta vasishta gave it to his son shakti who gave it to his son parashara who gave it to his son vyasa who gave it to his son shuka so i really don't know whether shuka was the te te teacher exactly of gaudapada acharya after shuka gaudapada acharya is brought into the picture then gaudapada acharya taught it to govinda bhagavad pada who taught it to shankara and shankara had four important shishyas are told it is not that shankara had only we all have so many students <laughs> then what about shankara uh, it is not that he had only four students but still four students were made the mathadipatis the chaturamnaya and therefore mainly these four students are talked about so we have each person and uh, so anand giri and anand giri perhaps i don't know whether they are the same so he has written on the for the bashyam and vartika kara writing a vartika i mean duruktam anu anuktam etc so the intellectual honesty is he, with all the respect to the guru still if the guru has left out something he can he can point out the guru doesn't take it uh, that it's a disrespect and he doesn't consider when he says the what was not told by the guru he points it out neither the guru takes it as disrespect nor the student takes it as a disrespect because it is a commitment to the intellectual honesty the i mean commitment to the teaching thus it goes on up to today we have as again here it was pointed out so we have swami shivananda whose guru was swami narayanananda so swami shivananda was the diksha guru for swami chinmayananda ji and swami chinmayananda ji taught the swami ji initiated him into sanyasa and we saw the other gurus also who are here and like this we have been having so many gurus here and again imagine our swami ji so you saw pictures after picture swami ji in the midst of a sea of oranges <laughs> you know in between you have to find out who are the faces so so many teachers who the swami ji has created who are really teaching all over the world so <clears throat> the uniqueness of Par parama pujya swami ji is this that he was always interested and dedicated to giving the advaita vision so let it be in the course in the course of course he is teaching the advaita vedanta so he was he was very particular that he, even more than the nuances of all the grammar and the and the bashyam and the sub commentaries the vision is important all the time was very particular that the vision should go right into our hearts and even in a, in if we let it be a public talk again the vision is there i have seen him talk to children just a casual satsang also somewhere he'll bring in the vision and bring in the advaita vision and talk to them so he was so committed to this to this advaita vidya promotion and again he was very particular in pointing out i am not teaching it is not my vidya 
he was very particular the institutions are also not named after him and he was very particular what i am only a link and i am only passing down the knowledge that has been handed over by the rishis that is why this place is called harsha vidya people pronounce it harsha vidya harsha vidya all sorts of thing, things this is harsha vidya a vidya that is given out by the rishis for which swami ji says i am only a link in this okay and she was very interesting and then he was very particular about promoting shankara's vision so he used to sometimes even discourage us a little that don't don't get too distracted by sub commentaries and sub commentaries now pay attention to shankara bashyam and everything you get out of shankara's bashyam he was very very particular about that in fact he was such a promoter of shankara that when the shringeri matha decided that they want to give an adi shankara acharya award they thought the best person to deserve that is puja swami ji and shringeri mahasanidhanam decided that when swami ji was not well and he was in the hospital okay this year we won't give it to anybody first our first time award will be given to puja swami ji and then only to anybody else so it is he was so i mean he was so aware of the fact puja swami ji was training so many students who could teach much and then he was very particular <coughs> that we should be true to the shastra and never have a casual attitude towards the shastra just don't gloss over look into every word of the molam every word of the bashya and do justice to the shastra and you try to learn it doing justice to the shastra and when you teach also so be responsible teachers okay respecting the shastra and respecting the listeners so he was very particular you should respect the audience you don't talk anything that comes into the head he will, you have to talk what is exactly true to the shastra in fact puja swami ji used to say once that whenever i am teaching i look at the audience and in my mind that more than what, what all i have to say more than that what all i should not say at that in to this particular audience i should not say at this time that work goes on more we have seen many teachers who the moment they quote something immediately their mind will uh, go to a parallel quote and from that another parallel quote so sometimes in one hour they would have given 90 quotes more than what is there but swami ji was very particular and one day i remember that uh, he said if he people may think i don't quote if i want i can also quote and i remember the day full the second chapter of the gita he just quoted backwards from the last shloka backwards i don't know whether you people remember so he just quoted backwards he said i can also quote but i don't quote unnecessarily unless it is very essential because i know what is to be said in a particular class and i'm very uh, very aware of that he used to say now <clears throat> swami ji touched on this shloka which i was also going to quote from a different angle so in the whole parampara one one considers the guru equal to ishvara <laughs> okay but then we have to understand what exactly it means it is not that we what shall i say we replace ishvara with the guru <laughs> because in many places again what happens is ishwara's pictures and ishwara's thing go off somewhere the guru's thing only comes to the main thing so that is not it the shweta sutra upanishad very clearly says yasya deve para bhakti hi yatha deve tatha guru tasya mahatmana i am i mean quoting more prose wise so ati katitaha yartaha prakashante so the idea is that ishwara bhakti is very very important for us to gain this knowledge in the same way guru bhakti is also essential for us to gain this knowledge because guru kripa ishwara kripa both are very very important for us in fact each of us without without creating any cult we we, we have this shraddha that without ishwara's grace i cannot get a guru 
so you can go and get caught in any type of ashram and any type of teaching etc but then that you get a guru who can really give you the vision of the shastra without you know compromising anything is really ishwara's grace and therefore we should have the attitude so it is not that you should convince everybody my guru is equal to ishwara but you should have, we should have the attitude ishwara has come in the form of my guru to teach me so the, that because there are a rare some rare people like uddhava and krishna i mean sorry uddhava and arjuna for whom she, krishna was there right in front bhagwan himself was there right in front to teach but here we have to understand that it is bhagwan who has really blessed us with a guru and at least during the time when we listen to the shastra we sort of have the attitude that it is actually ishwara who is come in this form to teach me after all ishwara can come in any form so ishwara has come to teach me so this is a very important attitude it is not as if we are trying to create a cult only if all the whole set of people join together and say this okay you have to take my guru as the avatar and this one person alone is avatar etc then it becomes a problem otherwise this is a shraddha insight it need not be shared with anybody also it is just a shraddha insight last but not least i just again want to quote another thing when this shankara was there installed in our temple previously so at that time we used to chant as a dhyana shloka one shloka which many of you may be uh, mean aware of so agnyanant i mean agnyanantar gahana patitan atma vidyopadeshaihi tratum lokan bhavadava shika tapa papachyamanan muktva maunam vatavitapino mulato nishpatanti shambhor murtis charati bhuvane shankaracharya rupa so i forget i do who, who has written if you remember <laughs> okay so this particular uh, shloka says now actually dakshinamurti his usual he he is there at the foot of the banyan tree and uh, dakshinamurti is known to be actually main vedanta spiritual guru so we take dakshinamurti more for the atma vidya guru and we take saraswati who gives both para vidya and apara vidya okay so here there are people this lokan so these people people have all agnana antar gahana patita they have fallen into this deep pit of ignorance self ignorance and also not only that bavadava shika tapa papachyavana and again there is a real this samsara agni is burning with all its you know flames coming up and that heat is scorching so people who are being scorched by this agni of samsara tapa and also who have fallen into this deep pit of ajnana so dakshinamurti tratum lokan in order to protect them so atma vid how how to protect these people because the protection should be in keeping with what is the problem so the problem is one of ignorance and therefore ignorance of what ignorance of oneself therefore atma vidya upadeshaihi tratum loka so in order to protect them by giving this uh, teaching about the atma so he decided as though to leave his steady place of the uh, the foot of the banyan tree he moved away he also gave up his maunam and he took the form of shankara and charati bhuvane shankaracharya rupa so he took the form of shankara and then go, goes around the whole world and we know adi shankara went from kashmir to kanyakumari and all the places teaching everything so <clears throat> it is my shraddha okay that in the modern days it would not be an exaggeration if we were to say tra- <clears throat> so vatavita pino moolato nishpatanti shambhor murti hi charati bhuvane dayananda roopa because actually swami ji has just gone all over the world and how many people he has taught 
literally all the countries uh, he has visited and he has taught so many people that we untiringly so it is just unimaginable that a person can do this much of uh, traveling and this much of teaching i remember the days when he would have just traveled to some other uh, foreign country and then landed up here it is only short at that time golf the, the golf car was not there <laughs> otherwise he would have driven probably the car right into the lecture hall straight away come here forget the jet lag forget anything and whatever he might have talked in some meetings he could have talked politics perhaps for the hindu renaissance he could have talked anything and he can come and sit right here and start off the bashyam where he left in the previous class <laughs> okay so which is an amazing thing we will be searching in the book <laughs> because one week he was not here and he can just pick up that and then just go ahead with that so that in our contemporary days that we have had really a teacher like him and who has really given us so much and that you know there was another question that was being asked when swami ji was not well what will happen after swami ji passes away what will happen has he appointed successors all sorts of questions were there roaming in this thing none of his not the main four gurukulams they are just flourishing the crowd that is here shows that it is today the whole hall is filled you know today so everything he has he has created enough teachers who can teach at the gurukulam level three year courses who can teach at their own places etc so we have I mean he has created enough and more teachers and then just the parampara flows just avichinna it flows and so we are really very fortunate in the on this particular day that we can be also one link in this guru param guru shishya parampara that we have had the blessings of gurus for centuries who have passed on this knowledge that it comes to us even today so with all my kritagnyata i offer namaskarams to all the guru paramparas
First, all the sannyasis uh, should come to the namaskara and followed by the brahmacharis, chaitanyas, and then others. From one side, from one side. From one side. From one side.